Hello and welcome to another Health Essentials Podcast. I'm John Horton, your host. The use of antidepressants has climbed in recent years as folks seek out solutions for increased stress and anxiety. These medications are first-line treatments for a variety of mental health issues, and they're now used by more than 1 in 10 people in the United States and many other countries. Today, we're going to take a closer look at the more common types of antidepressants while exploring how they work and the differences between them. Board-certified clinical pharmacy specialist Josh Moline is with us to break it down. Dr. Moline is one of the many experts at Cleveland Clinic who pop into our weekly podcast to help us better understand the way our bodies work. So with that, let's talk about SSRIs, SNRIs, and NDRIs to make sense of this alphabet soup of antidepressants. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Moline. Uh, thanks for stepping away from the pharmacy for a few minutes to chat. Hey, John. Thanks for having me on the podcast. Happy to be here. We're glad you could stop by. Um, and, and I'd like to kind of start things off uh, about by talking about how common antidepressants have become uh, as a form of mental health treatment and just how usage has been on a steady rise, particularly among young adults. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, kind of really all started with COVID, really increased the prevalence of prescription prescribing for antidepressants. I know there was a couple of recent studies last year that said that about 64% uh, prescriptions had increased from 2020 onwards. And wow. Well, it, it, was a, it was a rough stretch. So that's, it that's was a rough stretch. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, I think just kind of from COVID, you know, kind of being in isolation, I know some of us had to keep going in the hospital and things like that and got a little bit of that social interaction. But a lot of people missed out on that during that COVID time. So, um, you know, obviously financial stressors, relationship stressors all kind of came about from that. It has been. I mean, these have been some stressful years. And, and we see that uh, in just in just about every aspect um, of life. Um, are, are there other things being done as far as to kind of help people, I mean, deal with with, with some of the stress and, and just handle it a little better? Yeah, there's um, some great organizations out there. One that really comes to mind is the National Alliance on Mental Illness, as well as some other um, you know, public health campaigns that are really trying to reduce the stigma around mental health, as well as just provide some more online resources to really emphasize the importance of treatment. Yeah, cause that's, I mean, one of the things we want to emphasize here is obviously that you know the, these antidepressant medications are available, but I mean, right. it's not necessarily the only way to, to kind of go at these issues. Yeah, absolutely. I think these organizations have done a great way just to overall just provide better access to care, whether that be online resources, uh, growth in areas like telehealth and virtual appointments uh, to gain access to providers to get medications, but also increase access to, uh, excuse me, to increase access to therapy as well. Well, and, and it's all part of the part of the solution. And, and, and obviously medication is is kind of in there. So that's kind of what we're going to focus on a bit today. Um, so, so in the most uh, just basic sense, you know, what is an antidepressant medication? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, basically, an antidepressant medication is a type of medication that is used to treat depression as well as other mood disorders by helping balance, you know, certain chemicals in the brain that we call neurotransmitters. And those include like serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. And all of these chemicals sort of play a role in regulating our mood, our emotions, and just overall mental well-being. And kind of by influencing these chemicals, they can help improve symptoms of depression, anxiety, maybe feelings of hopelessness or lack of interest in hobbies or activities. You know, it's so interesting because because I think when, when we do think about our mood and just how you're feeling, you, you don't really tie it to kind of the, these these chemicals that are running around in, 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 in your brain. You know, it's, it's one of those things you don't necessarily think about a lot. Yeah, it's definitely not on your mind, right? You know, it's like we eat a good meal or we hang out with friends and sort of those dopamine or those chemicals sort of increase and like that sort of contributes to it. But there's just a lot going around or going on in the background that we're really not aware of. So if you take an antidepressant, like how, how quickly do these medications work? That is a great question because, uh, you know, when someone is feeling down or depressed, you know, we want to feel better as soon as possible, right? Uh, unfortunately, these medications do take a little bit of time to work. Uh, really, the studies and research that we have seen can take anywhere upwards of like four to six, maybe all the way up to six to eight weeks to really see the maximum efficacy of these medications. Wow. I I had no idea it was that long. There, so there's no just like instant happiness pill that, that, that somebody can take. <laughs> Unfortunately not, but there are things like early on when you do start taking the antidepressant that we do start to like see like improvements in. So that could include like improvements in appetite, 
sleep and just overall like improvements in like energy and sort of motivation. It's really kind of around week two or so where we really start to see improvements in mood. Um, but there are cases where people do start taking antipressa and they do start to feel better relatively quick. Well, let, let's start with kind of what, what the most common type uh, of antidepressant is. Yeah, I would say probably the most common antidepressant uh, people may be prescribed or what we call SSRIs, get into a little bit of that alphabet soup you talked about earlier. Uh, but that essentially stands for selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And some common ones you might hear of are going to be like Prozac, Zoloft, Celexa, Lexapro. Those are the brand names of those. You know, it can be a little bit confusing with the generic versus brand names. But um, that's kind of where with those uh, medications initially start with. Okay, so so what what are, what do these SSRIs what what do they do? Yeah, so an SSRI uh, is kind of in its name. It's a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. What does that mean? What does that complicated word mean? Well, essentially, it works by increasing the amount of serotonin. Again, that chemical in the brain that helps regulate our mood, our emotions, and mental well-being. And essentially, these medications, uh, essentially, when serotonin is released uh, through brain cells, it causes a, a signal to be sent, and then the brain sort of reabsorbs that. So this medication essentially like stops that reabsorption, which means more serotonin is allowed to stay in that brain to help improve our mood and reduce those feelings of anxiety and help with depression. And serotonin is always, I mean, that's, that's kind of the, the, the happy, uh, the kind of the, the happy chemical that's up, up, up in your brain, right? Yeah, it's definitely one of them. So serotonin, again, is kind of that chemical that helps with our mood and our emotions, all of that. And then dopamine's the other big one uh, that really is kind of more of our pleasure or reward pathway. But our SSRIs don't really target, you know, dopamine. They're mainly targeting the serotonin. Okay. So when would you be prescribed an SSRI? Like for what sort of uh, what what sort of uh, mental health issues? Yeah, SSRIs are what our first line for depression, anxiety, and post traumatic stress disorder. And they can also be beneficial as well for those um, suffering with like OCD. All right. Well, now let's switch over to to another uh, antidepressant, uh, which are SNRIs. Um, and I'll let you handle what, what the letters stand for there. Um, but, but how are those different um, than than the the antidepressant we just talked about? Yeah, absolutely. So an SNRI or a serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor. Easy uh, works, for you to say. <laughs> you're right. I've had a little <laughs> bit of practice, a little bit of practice. Uh, but these work really similar to our SSRIs, but they affect two chemicals in our brain instead of just one. So like an, SNR, or, excuse me, like an SSRI, an SNRI stops the brain from reabsorbing serotonin, but also blocks the reuptake of norepinephrine, which is another chemical that plays a role in our mood, our motivation, and our energy levels. So, so is this, is it prescribed for, for similar things as an SSRI? Yeah, these are also uh, first line as well for depression. Um, and then they can also potentially be used for anxiety disorders as well, as well as PTSD. But because of that norepinephrine component, we do just need to be a little bit more cautious because that is kind of our fight, res fight or fight response. So having too much norepinephrine could potentially worsen those anxiety or PTSD symptoms initially until our body kind of gets used uh, to those uh, new levels. Oh, it seems like with all of these, there's really a, quite a balancing act that has to has to take place. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are times to where it may take more uh, multiple trials of an antidepressant medication to really try to find the one that works best for somebody. Um, but again, also giving it enough time and, and adequate dosing to make sure that these medications are given a fair trial to work. All right. So, so we've talked about SSRIs and SNRIs. And, you know, whenever you talk about two things that are similar, sure. the first question everybody asks is, which is better? So I mean, do we have a, an answer when it comes to these two types of antidepressants? Yeah. So from kind of the studies and things, there really isn't one that's necess necessarily more effective than another. Both, again, are first line options for treating depression. It really just kind of comes down to one might be a better option for you based on one specific brain chemistry, as well as kind of the symptoms that one may be experiencing. Um, as like a pharmacist, we're always trying to use the least number of medications to treat as many indications as possible. So there are going to be some circumstances where uh, an SNRI works a little bit better for chronic pain. And if they have depression as well, we can use an SNRI, whereas SSRIs don't really help with that chronic pain. And sometimes are they even used uh, together? Yeah, I would say not necessarily more with the SSRIs or SNRIs are used together just because they target the same serotonin receptors. But we do often combine like an SSRI and maybe bupropion or other different uh, antidepressant drug classes to really kind of target all three neurotransmitters that are thought to play a role uh, in that pathophysiology of depression. 
Now, one thing we didn't talk about with both of these would be maybe uh, side effects. Um, so yeah. w- when it comes to SSRIs and SNRIs, are there specific side effects with, with both of them that kind of make them maybe better for somebody um, as opposed to the, the other one? Yeah, honestly, they have, uh, for really like most of all the antidepressant drug classes, they have pretty similar side effect profiles and are generally pretty well tolerated. Some of those more common side effects might include like headache, trouble sleeping, and maybe some like gastrointestinal side effects like nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. But overall, again, these are pretty well tolerated and should generally improve over one to two weeks as, you know, somebody gets used to taking the medication. Okay. Um, now let's shift gears. We've kind of, we've been exploring um, SSR, I mean, I'm going to mess them up when I say <laughs> SSRIs and SNRIs. Um, now we have a, a third one to kind of enter the mix here, and those are NDRIs. Um, yep. And I'll let you again tackle what those letters stand for. Yeah, absolutely. So again, these all have to do with sort of that stopping of reabsorption. So an N- NDRI is our norepinephrine and dopamine reuptake inhibitor. And so really the most common one out of this drug class is going to be bupropion or Wellbutrin. Uh, and again, it has a pretty similar mechanism of action. Again, stops the um, reabsorption of dopamine and norepinephrine. And like we mentioned earlier, dopamine is kind of our chemical or neurotransmitter that is kind of part of our pleasure or sort of that reward pathway. So I, I'm assuming that the reason why it's different than those other two is that it does not kind of deal with serotonin. And that's kind of what sets it apart a little? Yeah, exactly. So this one really doesn't target serotonin at all. So this one really is targeting, again, that norepinephrine and dopamine. And so this is actually kind of one of the more activating or stimulating antidepressants. So if someone is really struggling with like low energy levels, lack of motivation, things of that nature, maybe your program could be a good option to kind of give them a little bit more energy, more pep in their step to get about their day uh, and kind of help with those depression symptoms. All right. So, so once again, since we, you know, we love to compare things here, um, <laughs> how do uh, NDRIs compare to those more common SSRIs? And mm-hmm. again, is, is one more effective than the other, uh, particularly when it comes to treating anxiety or depression? Yeah. So I think we'll handle like the depression versus anxiety a little bit differently here. So for depression, bupropion is also a first line option. So we, the great thing is we have a lot of options we can choose from um, that we can prescribe someone when they initially come in or present with depression symptoms. Uh, as far as how it differs, uh, like we mentioned, it doesn't really target serotonin, but we can combine it with an SSRI to target serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine, all three neurotransmitters that are thought to play a role in that depression symptoms. From an anxiety standpoint, we can absolutely use bupropion if we want to, but because of how activating and stimulating this medication is, I may be just a little bit more cautious or slowly titrate up on the dose uh, just because it potentially could worsen those anxiety symptoms initially until you know, they get used to it. Yeah. Now, are there some situations where like you absolutely wouldn't want um, an NDRI um, prescribed? I know you mentioned if you're, um, but I guess um, not, not the president, if you had anxiety, maybe it wasn't the best thing. Are, are there some other issues that might come into play? Yeah, I think the biggest, uh, I guess, area where we wouldn't want to use bupropion is for those individuals who have a seizure history. So bupropion can lower the seizure threshold, making it a little bit more likely for a potential seizure to happen. Um, so that would definitely be a, an area where I would avoid prescribing uh, bupropion in. Okay. So, so from everything you've said, it sounds like all of these um, are, are effective and, and work mm-hmm. in, in various ways. Um, but it sounds like everything works a little different for every person. So right. w- with all the options that are out there then, I mean, how do you know that, that you're getting the right medication for you? Yeah, it can be a little bit challenging and, and again, frustrating maybe from the patient side of things because... Um, Like you mentioned, especially with psychotropic medications, each of these medications can work differently in someone. You and I can both take the same antidepressant and have very different responses to these medications, not only from an efficacy standpoint, but also from a side effect standpoint. So it is really kind of uh, the treatment is very individualized when it comes to uh, somebody's depression and how we go about managing it. So it's really important that when somebody is coming in for depression, that we kind of get a very accurate picture of what's going on. so we can try to use, again, the least number of medications to treat as many things as possible there. Now, now you had mentioned that it can take weeks for, for mm-hmm. antidepressants to, to kind of really kick in and, and kind of you know, maybe resolve or ease some symptoms. How quickly will you know if, if they're not working and what kind of things should you look out for? 
Yeah. So I think really kind of the earliest when we would sort of reassess if they're working or not from like a provider standpoint would be kind of at that four week part, uh, four week initial four week period. Um, kind of from there on, we kind of would just assess how things have going, how has your mood improved, how have your energy levels been, has your appetite or sleep improved, kind of those sort of things. Uh, and then if someone's getting sort of a partial response to those medications or improvement in those symptoms, we could either go up on the dose or maybe augment with a different medication and then kind of really kind of reassessing at that six to eight week mark uh, to really see how they're doing. Are, are there some red flags that would come up um, immediately if somebody were having issues with with the medication? Yeah, I think if someone was having, um, you know, just extremely intolerable side effects to the medications or uh maybe increases in potentially like suicidal behavior or ideation or having those thoughts, those are definitely concerning, but, and you would absolutely want to bring those up to your provider as soon as possible. Yeah, it sounds like, I mean, as with any medication, I mean, it, it, then, you know it's going to do something to your body. So it sounds like mm -hmm. communication and really kind of paying attention uh, to how you're feeling and acting and, and, and just, you know, going about your day are really critically important. Yeah, it really is. And I think uh, also, too, I think kind of getting the viewpoint of maybe your spouse or friends and family is a, a great way to indicator to how well the medication is working. Because sometimes we're not, you know, pervy to our own mood sometimes or if there's improvements and things like that. So getting other people's opinions on, hey, how have I been lately, I think is a really good indicator as well. Yeah, self-reflection is always difficult for a lot of people. You're right. It's good <laughs> if you have somebody you can trust who can say, hey, listen, I don't know if this is working for you. You, you should probably make sure it's someone you trust and that, that you're going to listen to. Yeah. So if someone's going to take away a, a few key points from, from our chat today, Dr. Moline, uh, <laughs> what would you want you that to be? Point. Yeah, I think I have like three kind of major points that I would kind of try to hit home here. So I think the first one would be is that these medications do take some time to work and it may take multiple trials of different antidepressants to find the one that works best for you. Everyone's brain chemistry is a little bit different and responds to these types of medications differently. I think my second one would be that we need to try to utilize a holistic approach when treating depression. While medications alone can be beneficial, combining medications with going to therapy, getting adequate sleep and exercise, a healthy nutrition, as well as, as using like sort of mindfulness and you know stress management strategies have led to better patient outcomes and remission rates. And kind of lastly, you know, if you are having concerns or sort of side effects with these medications, it's really important to talk with your healthcare provider or pharmacist before making any changes or stopping it. Uh, Dr. Moline, that, those are, that, that's a great way to kind of sum everything up. And, and you know, I think from, from everything that you've said, I mean, antidepressants can, can be invaluable to people and, in, 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 I guess, overcoming some of these issues. But, you know, it's also important to remember it's not the only thing. And, and you right. can also take advantage of, like you said, therapy and just kind of a healthier lifestyle and, and all this together yeah. could really help. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming in today. Like I said, this has been a, a fascinating talk and, and I, I know I've, I've learned a lot, including <laughs> what, what all those letters mean. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on. It's been a pleasure. Bye-bye. When it comes to taking antidepressants, you have options. Perhaps one of the different kinds of medications, whether it's an SSRI, SNRI, or NDRI, can relieve your symptoms. Work closely with your healthcare provider to see what might bring the best results for you. If you liked what you heard today, please hit the subscribe button and leave a comment to share your thoughts. Till next time, be well.